Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Congressman Price. Thanks for being here and thanks for the conversation we had the other day. Thank you. Um, Congressman, um, on May 7, 2015, well, let me begin by saying all of us know that we have come through a very unusual election process. Uh, President-elect Trump received almost three million votes less than Secretary Clinton, but he won the Electoral College. He's going to be inaugurated this week. He won a number of states by rather slim margins. During the course of his campaign, Mr. Trump said over and over again that he would not cut Social Security, not cut Medicare, not cut Medicaid. Let me read some quotes. On May 7, 2015, Mr. Trump tweeted, I was the first and only potential GOP candidate to state there will be no cuts to Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. On April 18, 2015, he said, quote, every Republican wants to do a big number on Social Security. They want to do it on Medicare. They want to do it on Medicaid. And we can't do that. And it's not fair to the people that have been paying in for years. And now all of the sudden, they want to be cut, end of quote. August 10, 2015, Mr. Trump said, quote, I will save Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security without cuts. We have to do it. People have been paying in for years, and now many of these candidates want to cut it. End quote. March 29, 2016, Trump said, you know, Paul Ryan wants to knock out Social Security, knock it down, way down. He wants to knock Medicare way down. And frankly, well, two things. Number one, you're going to lose the election if you're going to do that. I'm not going to cut it, and I'm not going to raise ages, and I'm not going to do all of the things they want to do. But they want to really cut it, and they want to cut it very substantially, the Republicans. And I'm not going to do that, on and on and on. Point being, this is not something he said in passing. I think it is likely he won the election because millions of working class people and senior citizens heard him say he was not going to cut Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. Congressman Price, a very simple question. Is the president-elect, Mr. Trump, going to keep his word to the American people and not cut Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid, or did he lie to the American people? Uh, I, have, I haven't had extensive discussions with him about the uh, comments that he made, but I have no reason to believe that, uh, that he's changed his position. All right, so you are telling us that to the best of your knowledge, Mr. Trump will not cut Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. Uh, as I say, I have no reason to believe that that position has changed. Uh, Congressman Price, uh, quoting Mr. Trump again, or at least paraphrasing him, just last week he said, roughly speaking, pharma is getting away with murder. You recall that tweet? I do. Okay. There are many of us on this side of the aisle who are working on legislation that would do at least two things. Number one, end the absurdity of the American people being ripped off by the pharmaceutical industry, who two years ago made top five companies, made $50 billion in profits, while one out of five Americans can't afford to fill the prescriptions their doctors write. Will you and will the president-elect join us in legislation we are working on, which number one, will allow Medicare to negotiate prices with the drug companies and lower prices, and number two, allow the American people to bring in less expensive medicine from Canada and other countries. Is that something you will work with us on? The, the issue of, of drug pricing and drug costs is one of great concern to all Americans. I think it's important to appreciate that in a couple areas we've had significant success, whether it's in the generic area where the costs are significantly less than they have been, and in part, but you are aware, sir, I don't mean to be, inter we don't have a lot of time. We are paying by far the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs. You don't disagree with that, do you? And, and uh, do you disagree I, with that? I think that's the case. I'd have to look at the statistics. The I think case. there are a lot of reasons for that. And if we get to the root cause of what that is, then I think we can actually solve well, it in a bipartisan one way. One of the root causes it is that every other major country on earth negotiates drug prices with the pharmaceutical industry. In our country, the drug companies can raise their prices. Today, they could double their prices. There is no law to prevent them from doing that. Will you work with us so that Medicare negotiates prices 
with the pharmaceutical industry. I, 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 you have my commitment to work with you and others to make certain that the drug pricing is reasonable and, and that individuals across this land have access to the medications that they need. Uh, wasn't quite the answer to the question that I asked. Um, uh, Congressman Price, the United States of America is the only major country on earth that does not guarantee health care to all people as a right. Canada does it, every major country in Europe does it. Do you believe that health care is a right of all Americans, whether they're rich or they're poor? Should people, because they are Americans, be able to go to the doctor when they need to, be able to go into a hospital because they are Americans? Yes, we're a compassionate society. No, we're uh, not a compassionate society. In terms of our relationship to poor and working people, our record is worse than virtually any other country on earth. We have the highest rate of childhood poverty of any other major country on earth, and half of our senior older workers have nothing set aside for retirement. So I don't think compared to other countries we are particularly compassionate. But my question is, in Canada, in other countries, all people have the right to get health care. Do you believe we should move in that direction? If you want to talk about other health countries' health care systems, there are consequences to the decisions that they've made, just as there are consequences to the decisions that we've made. I believe and I look forward to working with you to make certain that every single American has access to the highest quality care and coverage that is possible. Has access to does not mean that they are guaranteed health care. I have access to buying a $10 million home. I don't have the money to do that. And that's why the, the, we, we, we believe it's appropriate to put in place a system that gives every person the financial feasibility to be able to purchase the coverage that they want for themselves and for their family. Again, not what the government forces them to buy. Yeah, but if they don't have any, well, that's a longer story. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Sanders. Senator Hatch.